Hey guys, Scooter Street here. Have a um, Piaggio Zip in the shop today, which is a really great example of something I've been wanting to um, do a video on for a little while. So, if we have a look at the transmission here, the customer has brought this bike in because they said there's a bad noise in the transmission. So upon having an inspection, so we pulled it all out, there's um, little shreds of plastic all through it. Now this is the remnants of what was the Variata cooling fan. So on many 50cc uh, and also larger models, um, of other brands, uh, the outer pulley of the Variator, which is the one that obviously sits on the outside right before the nut, has uh, a metallic or alloy, usually alloy fan built into it. Now, the Piaggio uh, Hyper 2 engine, the two stroke 50cc engine, is a little bit different in that it has a uh, sort of a, a smooth outer fan uh, pulley with this toothed um, outer part, and then it has a plastic fan that then uh, sort of locks onto the outside little bit of a different system rather than casting the fan uh, directly onto the metal. Now what's often done wrong on this is you'll notice this is a brand new one we're about to put in this bike it has these four little slots in like a cross shape on it and those four slots are designed to sit into the, um, the little uh, star washer that goes on. Obviously it's got the kickstart spline in there but um, now it's really important that, that when this is assembled it's assembled correctly because you'll notice those four little tabs on this match the four tabs inside the um, little plastic fan. Now, if I just sit that in there, hopefully I can demonstrate this one-handed. Okay, now if I turn this over, you'll notice that, this probably, here we go. You'll notice that, if I can get this in focus, the metal part is extruded from the plastic so when you actually place this on the fan, the outer pulley, which is not a fan pulley on this particular setup, the plastic is just sitting in place. The plastic is not playing a part at all in the spacing of this system, in that the metal of this washer is directly contacting the metal of the outer pulley, and the fan is not playing a part in the spacing of that at all. Now what does tend to happen if the system is not assembled correctly, Let's say you haven't put the star washer in place properly and it's slightly off. When you tighten the nut, instead of those tabs sitting in their correct slot, it squashes the fan, the plastic of the fan. And what ends up happening is if we take another look on the outside of this, the metal is not, get this in focus, protruding properly anymore, keeping in mind that it's sitting on a conical face. So it needs to be protruding quite a bit. So what happens is the fan ends up playing a part in the spacing of the system. Now, this might be okay for a little while, but these fans, as they get older, do have a habit of uh, blowing apart, um, particularly on a, on a scooter with a, a bunch of Ks on it as the plastic gets old and brittle. Say your, your belt's a little bit old and maybe or maybe something goes in a transmission, a bit of dust, something like that, and the fan blows apart, well, suddenly that fan's not now playing a part in the spacing anymore. So all of a sudden, say that fan was adding half a mil of spacing uh, between this uh, star washer and the outer pulley, that half a mil is all of a sudden very gone, that all of a sudden completely gone, and you have half a mil of just free play movement on a bike that might be doing, say, 8,000 RPM. Now, uh, this becomes uh, really, really hazardous, particularly because it, the fans are only gonna blow apart when you're riding. So you're going to be at RPM when this happens, and um, unfortunately, what we have seen a couple of times um, recently, I actually saw this, that uh, the fan pulley or the, the fan plastic came apart and that additional space um, for that you know momentary bit of time was enough to essentially blow the transmission apart because all of a sudden it had all this additional movement, blew the transmission apart and it stripped the spline on the end of the crank that, um, which is required for the transmission to be able to lock onto the bike and actually get drive. And uh, that particular scooter ended up having to have a replacement crankshaft, which is a really expensive job and not something you want to do um, unless um, you know, you're, you're doing it for some sort of performance benefit. So it can, it can become, for the, for the sake of a, I don't know, something like $12, um, a very, very expensive and um, a costly mistake for such a simple little thing. So it's really important when you're doing these that you really take your time and make sure that the fan is locked in place. I'll show you in a moment what, what can sometimes happen as well, is when you assemble the system, because you're trying to hold those three things in place, sometimes the fan can slip slightly, 
and it's not in place properly. So I'll show you in a moment the, the way that we use to get the system to sit in place uh, as you're doing the nut and um, uh, obviously always uh, uh, tightening the nut up by hand as far as you can before you're touching it with an impact driver, which just ensures that everything while you're putting it together stays in place. Because if you get this wrong uh, for such a simple little item, you can um, cause a, um, a world of hurt and um, uh, quite a bit of money's worth of damage. So I'll show you how we do it, um, which we believe is a pretty foolproof method. And if you, if you use this method, everything will go together correctly. Together, a couple of things I'll just note before we've even gotten to this stage, we've cleaned out all the um, uh, the bits of fan that have blown apart. And um, we've actually uh, also sort of uh, really had a good inspection around behind the oil belt uh, and around these little gears up and behind the oil pump as well to make sure there's no bits of plastic behind there. Um, because there actually was a couple of uh, shreds of um, uh, chewed up plastic behind there. So, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get the um, the rear pulley. I'm just going to set it on here. Now this is a factory belt, Mitsubishi, and um, uh, this has the directional arrow. So what we need to do is uh, uh, essentially pull the uh, outer part of the uh, rear pulley towards the clutch. You need to twist it in a clockwise direction as you do that, obviously because of the pins and the slots inside it. So we can get the belt all the way up inside there so we can have plenty of slack when we um, get to our variator. little trick that uh, we often do in the shop is um, uh, keep one of the uh, bolts in the transmission cover here when doing this, just so it keeps the belt out of the way. So, got our variator here. Uh, again, um, we've um, uh, gone through and inspected the rollers and, and, the, um, and the guys to make sure everything's in uh, good condition and there's no um, uh, bits of rubbish uh, inside the variator or nothing uh, in it's either damaged or worn out. One thing I will note, when this came apart, because uh, the, the uh, fan hadn't been installed correctly previously, uh, the uh, very outer part of this spline uh, has been very slightly damaged. That's still okay, um, but um, it is providing a little bit of resistance when we go to put things in. So you do need to sort of wiggle it in place. It's not great, but um, it's not quite at that level that it needs to be, uh, needs to have a replacement crank. It is still okay to use for the time being. So what I like to do with these to make sure that the backing plate, obviously if you just push that uh, center bush, the backing plate's gonna push out from the very outer basket and all your rollers are going to go flying everywhere. So what I usually like to do is sort of pinch the bush, uh, resting my fingertips against the very outer basket so it all stays in place. You want a really nice, firm, metallic contact there so you know that's pushed all the way back and hasn't bound up. The next thing I'll note is um, uh, the star washer, we noticed that because the, uh, the end of the spline on this has been damaged, the, um, the spline on the star washer has been damaged as well. So it's not wanting to, it's, it's binding up, it's not wanting to go on properly. So we actually have a spare one here from an old scooter we've cleaned up. And um, that one is going on properly and not binding up. So we're going to replace that. Again, uh, when you're in here, it's, it's really worthwhile checking everything out uh, rather than putting your scooter back together with, um, with broken parts or worn out parts and um, just having more and more problems. So I'm going to go ahead and get the um, outer pulley ready now because we've already squeezed the belt in here. Good to go, we've got plenty of slack here. Again, the belt uh, can't bind up uh, between the very outer basket and um, the outer pulley and affect the spacing. So that's all going on really nicely. Okay, so next I'm gonna do, new fan and this, uh, the star washer. Gonna really slot it in there nicely. It's got a good firm fit. Got the, uh, there's a very small washer inside these as well. That's all sitting nicely in there. So holding it all together, obviously because there's a spline in there, it's going to slide it on. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, while holding it, wiggle the belt to make sure that the belt is moving freely in there, that the belt hasn't been squished between the two faces, which it hasn't. So next we're going to, we're going to do, hopefully that washer stays in place, get our nut, gently put it on by hand. Now at this stage, if your belt, if your nut is wanting to bind up before it's gone on, then um, there's a likelihood that it's been damaged. So this one's just ever so slightly binding. So I'm gonna pull it off and um, have a inspect the thread. If the thread's okay, uh, might just be slightly corroded inside, which it is, just very slightly. So this one's still okay to use. Because it is going on almost all the way before it's winding up. So I'm just gonna get a socket. Let's get a little leverage on there. Okay. 
do it up as tight as I can by hand. That way I know everything's sitting correctly in place. Now what can happen, as I've seen this happen before, uh, people put the nut in the end of the socket and just go straight on there with a rattle gun. It's the worst thing you can possibly do. Uh, because what happens is if this nut is slightly cross-threaded, you're going to completely thread the end of your crank. Um, definitely the nut, but there's a higher likelihood that you will damage the, the thread on the crank. So definitely uh, worthwhile doing it on by hand first, as tight as you can. And the other thing is, while it's hand tight, you can inspect everything. You can make sure that the little uh, tabs in the fan are all seated correctly. The belt isn't being bound up. Everything is how it should be. Uh, before you touch it with uh, an impact wrench. So that's all looking really good to me. I'm happy everything's all seated and I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and tighten this up now. So we use an impact wrench uh, because we have one in the shop and being that we're relatively experienced, we're pretty familiar with the tool uh, and how tight we can go with it. But generally speaking, if you were to use a variator locking tool, it's around the um, 22 Newton meters. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, get this back together. Obviously we've got our, um, our starter pinion in here all seated nicely so I'm gonna go ahead and do this up which you don't really need to see but um, uh, hopefully that gives you a, um, uh, a better idea of a more foolproof method of getting your transmission back together and how this system works because like I mentioned if you get this wrong it can cost you a lot of money completely unnecessarily so and this is another really good reason uh, why you should regularly check your transmission usually every 3,000 Ks. If you have performance parts on your scooter, it's often worth doing it maybe every uh, 1,500 to 2,000 because you're putting the parts under more load and strain. Another thing I'll say is I've seen some stuff going around of people saying that you should just remove uh, the, the, the plastic fan. This is the worst thing you can possibly do. Now don't just take my word for it. There's a quick way of testing this. Uh, with the fan, take your bike for a five minute ride, come back, uh, pull the transmission cover off, and without burning yourself, you feel how hot that variator gets. It gets extremely hot. Now, in the case of the bike that I mentioned earlier where the fan blew apart, um, the bike continued to ride, um, even though the transmission had started blowing apart, and it got so hot without the fan that the, the rollers and the guides actually melted. That's how hot it gets without the fan. Now, that's how much of a difference this fan makes. You must have the fan. You cannot run without a fan. You will melt your transmission. So uh, obviously it's doing a lot of work and it gets really hot. Absolutely crucial that you have your plastic fan. So going with the maintenance, um, when you're inspecting it, a good thing to check is that your fan, when the bolt is, uh, when the nut is tight and everything's tightened up, it doesn't have excessive movement. If your nut is tightened up and the fan's rattling around, uh, you absolutely need to replace it. Because what happens is, obviously it's a plastic part. Over time it wears. And um, at a certain point, when you have excessive movement like that, it's going to blow apart. And you know, maybe you don't notice when it blows apart. Maybe it blows apart and takes some other parts with it. Fortunately, this one didn't. But um, uh, having loose bits of plastic flying around your transmission, you know, while you're, you know, maybe doing 8,000 RPM, it definitely is not something that you want to do. Because if you don't notice, a piece can go in. Say it could snap the um, uh, the oil pump belt. You don't notice. You keep riding. You seize your um, seize your bike. There you go, you just cost yourself $400 for absolutely no reason for the sake of a, you know, a 12 or a $14 plastic fan cover. So really good idea to be doing regular maintenance and um, uh, checking this fan out here and replacing it if it needs to be replaced.